Kelsey. This is my channel, The Fancy Hat Lady Reads. I'm wearing one of my fancy booktube hats. I have got myself some spiced cider with a chai tea bag in it. And today I am bringing you my wrap up for the month of November. In November, I read seven things. I have already reviewed four of them separately. So I'm going to hopefully get through this pretty quickly and I'll link all the reviews for the things that I have already talked about. So the first thing I finished in November was the book that I was reading on the last day of October for Halloween, and that is Castle Hangnail, written and illustrated by Ursula Vernon. The illustrations look something like this and they're scattered throughout. This was my Halloween read because it is just the perfect, charming, middle grade book with Halloween vibes. This is about the inhabitants of a castle called Castle Hangnail that has been vacant for some time, and they are deeply in need of a new master for the castle because if they don't get a new master, the castle is going to be decommissioned by the Board of Magic. And who shows up to be the new witch of Castle Hangnail but this little girl named Molly? She is not quite what the minions were expecting, but they decide to roll with it because they need a new master for the castle. Molly may not be the imposing evil mistress that they were anticipating, but she has some magical ability and she absolutely loves the creepy fabulousness of the castle. Anyways, this is a lot about this community that the castle is in and this sort of positive relationship that Molly forges between the castle and the community and how all the minions come to decide that she really is the mistress that they want. It's light and fluffy but it's got a lot of deeper messages if you scratch under the surface and it's absolutely full of heart. Um, I would totally recommend this for anyone looking for more like Tiffany Aching. I had just reread A Hatful of Sky when I picked this up and there are definite similarities between these two young witches and the sorts of stories that they find themselves in. I gave this book four stars. The next thing I read was The Five Daughters of the Moon by Leanna Likitello. This is the first book in the Waning Moon duology. It's by far the shorter of the two books. This is from the Tor.com line. And this is a duology set in a fantasy world, a secondary fantasy world, that's inspired by the Russian Revolution and the Romanov sisters. I thought this was definitely the weaker of the two books. It's a slow start, and most of this book really feels like introduction. The introductions of some of the characters felt stiff and forced, but by the end I really was starting to care. I do think that this probably should have been one longer novel instead of a duology of two shorter books. I will link my video where I reviewed this duology in full. The next book I read was a short story collection that I got from NetGalley for review, and that is The Overneath by Peter S. Beagle. Beagle is, of course, a renowned fantasy writer most famous for The Last Unicorn, which I love. I was a little less impressed, however, with Summer Long, which was a more recent novel of his that I read. I really liked a few of the stories in this collection, and I think Beagle is technically a really good short fiction writer, but a lot of the stories had just like one thing that bothered me about them um, that kept me from enjoying that story. Overall, I gave this collection three stars. I did a full review of this collection on its own, and I'm going to link that for you. I did talk a little bit about each story in the book. November 11th was um, the Getting Graphic Readathon hosted by Caitlin from Kitty G and Elena from Elena Reads Books. I told myself I wasn't going to like set aside the day for reading graphic novels. I was just gonna see if I could squeeze any in when I had time. I did read two graphic novels for getting graphic. The first was The Encyclopedia of Early Earth by Isabel Greenberg. This is the first of two graphic novels of hers that take place in this world of early earth. I read the second one first, though. I had already read The 100 Nights of Hero, which I absolutely loved. This one is considerably shorter. It doesn't feel like it digs as deep um, as The 100 Nights of Hero does. It's also more based on mythology, I thought, whereas The 100 Nights of Hero was more based on fairy tales. Early Earth has this trio of gods, Birdman and his children, 
kid and kiddo, and um, basically kiddo created the earth and humans. And she's a generous and kind goddess, but her father Birdman, who is a cruel and strict god, keeps ca taking control of her creation. The story, though, is mostly about this young man who's from the north of early earth, and at the beginning of the book he arrives at the south of early earth and falls in love with a woman. It turns out that because of magnetic fields they cannot come within a certain distance of each other, so they get married anyways and decide that they're going to have their relationship by telling each other stories, and then the stories of this book is basically all of the, the stories that make up this guy's journey from the north to the south and why he set out and all of the countries that he saw along the way, and you get bits of the stories and mythologies uh, from all of these different fictional places. You get stories in this that are based on like Bible stories or Greek myth, but in this fictionalized setting. But I don't feel like the stories in this add up to quite as much as the stories in The 100 Nights of Hero did, and it, it is it is a shorter book, and I didn't realize that a good deal of the end of the book is these appendices, where it's got, like, pseudo-informational factoids about early Earth um, for some, like, extra world building that I didn't think was totally necessary. And also a couple of, like, spare stories that I guess didn't fit anywhere. Anyhow, I still really like Isabel Greenberg's style of graphic novel storytelling. I like the stories within stories. I like the mythos of early earth. I gave this book four stars. I might have been more enthusiastic about it if I had picked this one up first without having any particular expectations. I don't know. And then the other graphic novel that I read for Getting Graphic was March Book 2 by John Lewis, Andrew Aiden, and Nate Powell. This is a three-volume graphic novel series that is John Lewis's autobiography of his involvement in the civil rights movement. The first volume showed how he became involved in activism um, and participated in sit-ins. This volume focuses on his time as a freedom writer on the buses, and um, it also sort of chronicles his uh, rise to a high leadership position in the civil rights movement at a very young age. It culminates with the march and rally where Martin Luther King Jr. gave his I Have a Dream speech. This whole story is sort of set within a framing device of John Lewis um, attending President Obama's inauguration and the story is then told in flashbacks from there, so it's got this sort of look how far we've come feel. This is dealing with really heavy, really violent, really dark history, um, and it's sort of supposed to have that light at the end of the tunnel thing, and I felt like that light was extinguished. Anyhow, this is a really strong non-fiction series. Um, I, I'm reading it because the last two rounds of Getting Graphic, there's been a challenge to read a non-fiction graphic novel. And this time it was sort of like, hey, it's non-fiction November, and I like don't read non-fiction at all, so I suppose I can sort of count that this is like I sort of maybe participated in non-fiction November. Um, I read a non-fiction thing. That's actually surprising for me. By the way, I haven't shown you the art. The art looks something like this. It's black and white, but it's got a lot of nuance. It's not my favorite type of graphic novel art, but it was good enough. I gave this book four stars, which was the same rating that I gave the first volume. The next thing I read in the month was Artemis by Andy Weir, which I have also done a full review on. I will link that for you. This was another NetGalley arc. Um, I, I never actually read The Martian because I saw the movie and then once I see a movie of something I lose all motivation to read the book. It's just a thing with me. And I'm realizing the more I see other people's reviews of this book, how strongly people are comparing specifically the way Andy Weir writes characters um, to The Martian, 
and that, I'm just going to tell you, wasn't part of my perception of the book at all. This is a sort of caper heist sabotage story set on a lunar colony. I think it's, it's pretty solidly populist science fiction. It sort of, you know, is supposed to make you get excited about the, the nerdiness of the possibility of life on the moon without really making you grapple with any of the super big questions that are sort of floating, floating around the periphery of the premise. I enjoyed it while I was reading it. I don't think it's going to make a lasting impression on me. Um, I fell like right in the middle on this one and I gave it three stars. And then the last thing I read in November was The Sisters of the Crescent Empress, the second book in the duology that started with The Five Daughters of the Moon. I thought this was really good. Um, this is really character driven. This is the sort of story where not much actually happens in terms of plot, but there's a lot that's like mysterious and brooding and uh, the, the, the tension, the story all comes from the misunderstandings between the characters. All five of the Daughters of the Moon are being held prisoner in this haunted house um, and the, pretty much the entire book takes place in this house. And there's a bunch of the sort of weird, inexplicable magic that you can never really quite understand that I do really like in fantasy. So this is definitely a slow book, but it ended up being right up my alley in terms of like a, a type of fantasy that I really like and don't see it ton of. It's got a really heart-wrenching ending that's sort of ambiguous. I do, if any of that sounds good, I do recommend plowing through The Five Daughters of the Moon to get to this book because I thought that this was way by far the better of the two. Again, I'm going to link the review where I talked about these books in full. So there you have all the books that I read in November plus the two NetGalley arcs that were on my Kindle. Um, November and December are slow reading months for me every year, the hecticness of the holidays. Some years I'm more busy around this time of year than other years, but regardless I always feel like I'm kind of scrambling to put my life together by the end of the calendar year so I can claim I had a successful year or something. 